All right, this is lesson 36, evaluating functions. Um, you're going to do some more evaluating. And in math, we call functions just like uh, equations that have an input and an output. So functions are like a math machine, just like I was talking about machines where you have like, hmm, like a machine you put in ingredients for tacos, you put in the tortillas, meat, salsa, what's going to come out at the other end? A taco, right? Make sense? Or if I put ingredients for cookies, what should come out of the other end of the machine? Goodness. Cookies, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I shouldn't get like cookies and like a hot dog, right? It's not going to work like that. Um, a new term that I want to teach you in math, that's a math machine, is called a piecewise function right here. If you look at the board. Let me tell you what the concept of, of a piecewise function is. It's like saying... Let's say we had a, a machine. Let's say I brought in a new machine, and it's like, well, this machine actually makes two things. Okay. It depends what you put in, but it'll make two different kinds of things. And if you look inside of this machine, there's actually two smaller machines inside. So it really depends what you put in. So let me explain how it's different. So one part of the machine might just make cookies, and the other part of the machine makes cakes. This whole machine is a baking machine, OK? So it depends what you put in. So if you put in the ingredients for, let's say you put flour, sugar, butter, and if you put in chocolate chips, the machine knows to make what? Co chocolate. Cookies, right? But let's say I put in flour, butter, yeah. and sugar, and then I also put in frosting. Make a cake. It's going to make a cake because it knows, oh, if I have frosting, it's going to pop out a cake. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, so it makes two different things, to, and it depends what the ingredient is. It, the ingredient really changes what the machine does. Does it make sense, everyone? Yeah. Good or no? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's what we're talking about here with a piecewise function. Depends what ingredient we put in, okay? So the ingredients are the inputs, and the products are the outputs, okay? So uh, these are the steps. If you're on the video, you should pause it. Okay, ooh, there's the answers. That's how you do number one and two. But I won't show you that. Okay, so number one. This is just a different way of showing with math. So evaluate the function for 6. So let's say our ingredient is 6. How do we know what the output is? Okay, so this is function notation. So whenever I see f of x, this is telling me this is what the math machine looks like. If I have x, this is what the rule is, okay? So anywhere I have x, I'm going to put in 6 in this case, okay? So I'm going to rewrite this. Look how I do this. I'm going to rewrite it as f of x. Six, right? We're saying what ha happens if I put in the ingredient of six into my machine? Okay. So we got negative three times six minus ten. Okay. We're anywhere we put x, we're gonna put in negative six. Then we use PEMDAS to evaluate. We got negative three times six is negative eighteen. Negative eighteen minus ten. We're gonna evaluate right now. Negative eighteen minus ten is negative twenty-eight. So that means when I put the ingredient of 6 in, I get an answer of negative 28. That's the output. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're only using one ingredient here. Could I have picked other ingredients to put into this math machine? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. So that's how we do number one. Okay. Number two. Number two is like that baking machine that had two different ways it takes ingredients. It depends what ingredient you put in, but it could make cookies or it could make cakes, right? So... On this one, it says find uh, the answer if you have negative 3 and 2. And it gives us a couple rules. It says, here's the function. If, if, the, uh, if the number, the ingredient we put in is less than 0, then we're going to use this. If the ingredient is greater than or equal to 0, then we need to use this one and not 0. Make sense? So we have two ingredients it's asking us to put in. Let's put in negative 3 first. So I'm going to put in negative 3 into this math machine, okay? But I have to figure out what's the math machine going to do. Well, since the ingredient is negative 3, it's less than 0, so I have to use this first equation. So I'm going to put f of negative 3 will be equal to negative, negative 3, okay? Then I just simplify. What's a negative negative 3 really equal to? Positive 3, okay? So whenever I put an ingredient of negative 3 in this particular math machine, it's going to get filtered through this first equation because it's less than zero, and then we're going to plug it in, and we get three as the output. Okay? What happens if I put a different ingredient? Question? Oh, no. Oh, I thought you had kind of 
Okay, what happens if I put in 2? Okay. If I put in 2, it's going to use the different uh, output, which is x is greater than or equal to 0. So our ingredient is greater than 0. So I have to use this equation. So I'm going to write f of 2 is equal to 2, putting the ingredient 2 plus 1. And then I just solve, which is also 3. Different ingredients, but the same answer, right? Okay, that happens sometimes. All right, any questions on numbers one or two? Okay, big idea, you put an ingredient in, what's the output and after the math machine? Good? Can I get a thumbs up if you understand this and thumbs down if you're not understanding you need to, need to re-explain? Good? Okay, cool. So let's have you talk to your neighbor. Let's have one talk to the twos first about number one and then two will switch. Twos will talk about two. Okay, ready, set, go. These together, number three. Okay, number three, it's, um, we got some words here, and it's a little confusing because um, I need to put a little line here, so give me a moment. I'm going to write a couple of things here Shh, just to give you an idea. Okay, so this problem says evaluate f of a, so this is our math machine, our function with an a instead of x. It's the same thing. It says whenever we put a number or an ingredient in, we're going to take negative 3 times the ingredient plus 5. Okay. And then there's some new math words. We haven't really talked about them, but range is the output. Okay. It's another name for output, and domain is the input. These are the ingredients. So ingredients and what comes out. Okay. And it's asking what happens if we put these ingredients in. Okay. So how many different ingredients are there? Three. Three. So we're going to have to put, we're going to run this math machine three times. We're going to put ingredients three times. So let's do this one together. So let's pretend we're putting negative three as our ingredient. We're going to, instead of putting A down, we're going to put negative three in our, into our uh, math machine. we got negative three times negative three plus five. Okay, what's negative three times negative three? Positive nine. And then what's nine plus five? Oh, uh, 14. 14. That means when I put the ingredient of negative 3 into this math machine, I get out 14. Okay? Make sense? Okay, good. Let's do the next one. You're writing these down too, right? Do, do, do you need to catch up right now? Okay, let me give you a moment to catch up. And the next ingredient. So what's the next ingredient after negative 3 that it's asking for us? 1. So we're going to put in 1, okay? So here we go. We got... Supposed to say f of 1 is equal to, and we're just putting in our ingredients, negative 3 times 1 plus 5. Okay, let's work it out. What's negative 3 times 1? Negative 3. Negative 3. What's negative 3 plus 5? 2. 2. That means when I put in the ingredient of 1, my output will be 2. Make sense? There's only one output. Okay. Good. Try the last one. What's the last ingredient or input it's asking for us to try out? Four. Four. Okay, put it in and see what you get. I'll give you about 20 seconds, okay? I think you could do it. Go. Negative 7 out. Negative 7. Do you agree? Is it negative 7? Yeah, that's right. When you put in uh, 4 in, you plug it in, you get negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So that means when, whenever we put an ingredient or input a 4 or we evaluate it, we get negative 7. Does that make sense? Do we necessarily have to use these three ingredients or inputs? No. No, we could pick whatever we like, right? How many numbers are there? Three. How many numbers are there in the whole universe? Oh, a lot. A lot. How many is a lot? What's the word for a lot? Infinite. Infinite, right? So there are an infinite number of inputs here that we could use, okay? And they would all give us a different output, okay? So that's how we do number three. Now let's look at number four. Number four is like number two, except that... It's going to give us, um, we got three ingredients that's saying evaluate these three, negative two, negative one, negative one ten. except that this machine is like that baking machine. It's got two different smaller machines, right? It's got the one for cookies and it's got the one for cake. Okay, it gives us some rules. It says if the ingredient is less than zero, we're going to use this one here. If the ingredient is greater than zero, we're going to use this one here. Okay, make sense? Yeah. Go there? Okay, good. So let's put a negative two. Uh, negative 1 and negative 1 tenth. I want you to tell me what the answers are. I think you can do this one by yourself, okay? Go. What do you notice when we put in negative 2, negative 1, and negative point 0.1? What's going to be my answers on each of them? And so, 
itself, but positive are the opposite, right? Because these are each of these are negative, right? So they're all going to be, we're going to use negative 2 is going to be equal to positive 2. If we put an ingredient of negative 1, the answer is positive 1. If we put the ingredient of negative 0.1, it's going to be positive 0.1, right? Are these the only ingredients or inputs I could use again? Yes or no? No. No. Okay, I'm going to give you a question. I'm going to I'm going to ask you about this next ingredient. I want you to tell me, or actually turn to your neighbor and explain how you would solve this this next ingredient. Okay. So here's the ingredient ready, and tell your neighbor a strategy to figure out the answer. What happens if you put the ingredient of 29 in? Okay, go. What would you do? Okay, so what's the uh, what's the output? Three. Thirty or three? Thirty. Or negative three. What do you think? Thirty. Why thirty? Because it's one Good. The ingredient is first what? Greater than zero. Good. It's greater than zero. So are we going to use this first equation here? No. Negative x. No, we need to use this different equation. X plus one, and then of course. What's the, uh, Elena, what's, what, how do we figure it out after that? Uh, 29 plus 1 is 30. Good, so 29 plus 1 is 30, so then, oh, what was that? Not 0, why did I put that? It's supposed to have a 3 right here. There we go, 30, right? Because if we go 29 plus 1 is 30, right? So this is called a piecewise function. It means that we have to check the ingredient first, figure out where it goes, and then we use, we process it, okay? That's it. So, we got some time ahead of us. So, um, you were you all saw the video yesterday. Do I care how fast you go? Is it does it matter how? Let me uh, repeat myself. Let me conclude this lesson here. Um.